All right, welcome back, everyone. Hopefully, you stuck with us for that. As we are in our final Ten game for remaining. Group A, as we've got Isaris Gaming on the Dire side, they're going to be going up against the champions of Summoner's Ten Rift back. on the Radiant side. And uh, well, Summoner's Rift, they're pretty much well. They are guaranteed to advance into the next round into our playoff. They they're guaranteed a slot in the top two. If they beat Isaris, then well, they're going to be number one in the group for sure. If uh, if they Radiant don't, then I believe they still are number one in the group. Once again, it's going to go to uh, one of those tiebreakers between Summoner's Rift and team, team Leviathan. And because, well, Summoner's Rift beat Leviathan, they should win that tiebreaker. As I imagine, that's how the tiebreaker works. I don't think it actually stipulates that in the rules, but I imagine it must. And I must have just uh, skipped Queen over it. Of but uh, either way, uh, Isaris, for them, this game doesn't really mean much. Um, they're obviously going to love the practice against a team of the, the caliber of Summoner's Rift, so they're going to definitely try their best and try to, uh, well, try to take a game off a team that not only won Canada Cup uh, last time around, but also finished, Ten seconds finished uh, strongly in the group stages this Radiant time around and is already on pace to, to try and repeat what they did uh, just last season. Well, I do have one thing, one injury to report that I don't think is actually going to affect the game. But uh, Demon, he has sustained an injury. He, uh, he twisted his ankle while going to the gym earlier today, and I'm not making this up. He Ten tweeted about it. Remaining. He twisted his ankle on the way to the gym, so it's uh, five seconds remaining. It's uh, it's on ice, <laughs> and uh, he's gonna have to Reserve he's gonna have time. to play through the pain. But uh, he is here, and <laughs> it's who says there's no injuries in esports? There you go. Okay, it may have nothing to do with esports, but whatever. But if you guys are uh, are new here and just joining, first of all, I should have introduced myself. I'm Niz, by the way. And, uh, well, it's called NizCast because I cast. Makes sense, right? But uh, what I'm casting is a Dota 2 Canada Cup. And uh, you can find out more about it at dota2.ca. Um, there's also an in-game ticket that you can buy for $8.99 American. <laughs> I should know what that is in Canadian, but I still haven't looked it up for some reason. But uh, that ticket also comes with... Uh, Radiant a custom spend back. set that uh, looks pretty awesome and uh, it's a way that you can not only support the tournament but also support the players because 12.5 percent of that 899 goes directly back into the prize pool so uh, definitely check that out if you got a chance also Dia i'm not an official back. stream for dota 2 canada cup their official stream is all dota 2 canada cup on twitch so you can go check that out as Radiant well team ban but uh, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into this draft and try to figure out what's going on here. As we got Troll, Batrider, and Huskar banned out so far by Isaris. Sniper, Storm Spirit, and Witch Doctor were the bans for Summoner's Rift. The picks: Ten Queen of Pain and now. Zeus for Isaris, and Axe and Treant Protector. Dire That's a, certainly a different opening uh, coming out from Dire Summoner's Rift. Pick. Summoner's Rift just banned out the Lion, and Isaris fired back with a Morph ban. Now it's uh, the balls in Isaris's court to uh, to pick, but they've already picked up the Queen of Pain and the Zeus, so two interesting pickups, two very versatile pickups. Queen of Pain, we did see her run as a support last game, might see that this game, um, but she's pretty versatile. She Ten can be run in the mid lane, she can be run in the off lane, and of course, like I said, she could be run support. Um, as for Zeus, remaining. he's kind of the same thing, although typically run in either the mid lane or support, he can also be thrown into the off lane. So Isris not really revealing anything just yet with those picks. Uh, but now they're going to pick up a clockwork, so that's going to uh, reveal pick. quite a bit. Dio As we at least know their off laner is going to be the clockwork. Um, but we don't actually know who's going to be mid, whether it's the Queen of Pain or the Zeus. And maybe they don't know either. That could just be a lot of flexibility right now in their draft. And they're saying, hey, we'll We'll adjust which one of these heroes we're going to put mid um, based on, well, what we see from Champions of Summoner's Rift. But uh, they've just picked up a Juggernaut, so they're looking Ten pretty scary remaining. thus far. Uh, Summoner's Rift, they 
They do play Axe quite Five a bit, and uh, they do play him in the off lane, but they also sometimes will put it on Demon Reserve and throw it time. into the jungle. I don't think we're going to see that this game. Looks like it's going to be Banana Slam Jamma, and not Banana Slam Jamma. I don't know why I said that. Bugatti 420 on uh, on that Axe in the in the off lane, and Tramp Protector. Uh, I don't I don't really feel like that's. Uh, that's the kind of hero that Demon will be playing. I believe Hero played that last time around. And of course, the, that leaves the Juggernaut safe lane with the tree. Axe in the off lane. Skyrath Mage. Yeah, Demon's probably going to be playing that. So we've got our, our defensive tri lane, our safe lane tri lane for Summoner's Rift. And Isaris picked up Eventual Spirit. Still not revealing who that other support's going to be. Um, Eventual Spirit and Queen of Pain probably would work quite well together. Um, that would leave Zeus in the mid lane. But honestly, I don't know. There's really not anyone who's really that squishy on Summoner's Rift. Remaining. So I feel like Queen of Pain would probably be more the stronger pick to put in the mid lane and just run Zeus' as support, which will help with counter warding quite a bit. Drill Ranger. Ranger is going to be the pick. So Radiant that'll kind of pick. synergize with the three already ranged heroes heroes that they have on their roster. Drill, of course, making it four. Zeus... I mean, he is ranged, but he doesn't really auto-attack all that much. I should mention the last two bands. Zelina was banned out by Isaris, and Phantom Lancer was banned out by Summoner's Rift. Now they're going to look to pick their last hero here, which should be going in the mid lane Ten against, I'm assuming, the Queen of Pain. That's going to be a Templar Assassin. Interesting pick. Very interesting pick. Hmm. Because Shadow Strike will chew through Refraction Charges on the TA. The TA still does uh, okay against the Queen of Pain, so. It's also here that you can also kind of jump on the Drill Ranger, if need be. Interesting. Well, we already see... Uh, who selected those heroes? And well, I'll, I'll actually just introduce it with the teams. On the Radiant side, we have Summoner's Rift. Playing their Templar Assassin Prepare is going to be Brax. It's going to be Brax on the TA. We've got Hero playing the Treant Protector. Demon Red Bull is going to be playing the Skywrath Mage. we got Bugatti 420 on the Axe. And Banana Slam Jamma is going to be playing that Juggernaut. Oh my god, that's an awesome sword. That thing's gigantic. What is this? we got to check this out. I can't... Dota TV, please. No. There we go. We got it. Let's just close this. We've got we've got important things to do here. What is this? Defender of the Ivory Isles. I don't feel like that's new at all. Okay, I'm just out of the loop. Whatever. We've got a dire side too. Let's introduce them. Isaris is going to be playing on the dire side, playing their ventral spirit. It's going to be full back. Seconds to battle. Pepita is going to be on the Dro Ranger up in the top lane. We've got DDX on the Queen of Pain. Dolce Mania is going to be on the Clockwork. And Nidara is going to be on the Support Zeus. Well, it looks like Isaris is uh, kind of going hard on the top rune here. And they're looking to secure that. And uh, they've even picked up a set of Sentry the Wards. They've, they've split them. So one's on the Zeus. One is on the Blessing. Queen of Pain. Of course, she's going to use that to, uh, to help her lane a little bit better against the... Templar Assassin in the mid lane, as we see Brax is indeed going to be there. As uh, He's been pulled a little bit. Um, he did buy a Wraith Band, so he's not a uh, rushing bottle. But he should be able to get a bottle up pretty quickly against the Queen of Pain. And uh, I see Queen of Pain also going a stats route as well. You are not really uh, not worthy. bottle rushing either. So that's our mid matchup. As for our top, it looks like we're going to have a dual lane. It's going to be the Axe. And the Trant Protector, they've actually ran this lane a little bit earlier on in the tournament. They're going to be going up against the Ventral Spirit, the Zeus, and the Drill Ranger. And in the bottom lane, we've got, uh, well, Clockwork, who's taking a little bit of damage here. But he's going to be going up against Juggernaut and Skywrath Mage. There's a Demon may actually get first blood here on Dolce Mania. Nope, never mind. He's going to bring him down to 12 HP. But uh, he will just barely survive there. Demon taking quite a bit of damage himself. But uh, he doesn't have the luxury of a healing salve like the Clockwork does. So he'll have to wait a little bit longer for the Tangos to heal him up. 
hero getting a right click off onto fullback and you just saw how much HP fullback lost there just from one right click from this tree hitting for 86 and uh, it's basically a hero with double damage at this point using the leech seed there to not only get a little bit more damage on that revenge but also return a little bit of health from any kind of harass that hero had already received. Nidara playing quite aggressive pushing up past this trying to force back hero but this dual lane is just so tanky and it's hard to really get any damage in and hard to really push them back. Axe and Tree are just so defensive and so uh, tank. Tank? Tank? Tanky? Tanky. That's what I'm looking for. I just didn't come to mind. <laughs> Another set of set of tangos is going to be brought out to the mid lane for DDX. He's taking quite a bit of harass and he had to buy a set of tangos before he was able to get his bottle so Brax doing a good job there. Lincoln, uh, his side blade hits up onto DDX and forcing uh, ho forcing him to buy that little bit extra regen. That was, uh, how's the bottom been going? Looks like Demon has got his HP back up, but hasn't really been able to deal too much damage to the Clockwork recently, as it's been a little bit more passive here. As Clock's managed to get about three and a half levels, trying to do uh, a little bit of a cheeky play there, maybe trying to turn around and trap a demon in a set of cogs with a battery assault going on. As uh, notice, he hasn't skilled any skilled one point in the power cogs. Notice he hasn't put them into stats, so it's not like he's going some uh, cogs and two points in stats build. He's uh, he's just waiting to decide what he's going to do with those skill points. Whether he's going to put one into battery assault, one into flare, or uh, two points in flare to help him with last hit. A last hitting or controlling the lane or maybe even put two points into battery assault if he uh, if he's able to trap demon in a set of cogs in our top lane nothing really out of the uh, ordinary going on so far as uh, just kind of typical and surprisingly actually when we look at the last worry, hits this axe has managed Axe's nine and two so far of course he's got a little bit less than a drope who's at 12 and four but uh Faye's doing quite well though he's gonna play maybe a little bit too aggressive here he's gonna get stunned up by the arcane missile and they're gonna try to go hard on this axe but he's gonna be perfectly fine as tree armor is pretty damn good especially with leech seed as well healing him up and bugatti 420 it's almost like he didn't even take that much damage he's already over half hp and uh, it was overall a pretty good exchange for them. As for our mid lane, Brax seemingly dominating it thus far at 20 and 5 CS compared to the Queen of Pain's 12 and 6. Compare our, well, it's hard to compare our offlaners, but we got 4.5 on the clockwork, and we got to compare that up against the Axe, who's well, almost hitting 4, so he's, uh, he's doing quite well for himself mine. in terms of XP in that offlane, but advantage has to go to Summoner's Rift as they're getting more XP on their supports, and I'll be able to compare that in a second as uh, Dolce Mania is trying to chase down Demon here, and he does have, oh, well, he had the faster move speed, and he popped the battery assault because he, th he knew he was going to be able to get in range there in just a second, although I think he should have probably just tried to step up and try to get the cogs block, but uh, that courier came in, delivering that boots of speed just in time for Demon to, uh, to allow him to not feed. Let's, uh, let's actually bring up that hero level and we can see just uh, the effect that 2 on 2 lane setup for Summoner's Rift has had on this game. As you can see, um, the supports for Summoner's Rift, we've got Tree at level 4, Skyrath at level 3 compared to the two supports on Isaris, which is a level 3 Venge and a level 2 Zeus. Everything else is actually pretty even, uh, with the exception of Jug now hitting level 5 and Dro still stuck at level 4. That's the advantage of running 2-1-2 lanes. If you can make it work, it's uh, it's actually more beneficial. But uh, if you can't, then uh, it's all about securing the farm for your safe laner. If you're not able to do that, then it's typically not worth it. But uh, Summoner's Rift, not only able to secure that farm for the safe laner, but able to uh, to run the 2-1-2 setup and get a little bit more XP and gold out of their lanes than you t uh, typically get. Yeah, Brax, got to be careful here in the mid lane. He does have haste bottled up, but uh, I don't think he knows that Dolce Mini is hanging around, although he did just throw up a psionic trap up onto the high ground, and that spotted him out. A ping came out, so they should know that he's uh, hanging around there, but uh, Brax is uh, now just going to make his way up to the top rune, bottle up a double damage, 
And uh, he's actually thinking of coming top. He does have the haste activated. And looks like the top lane is going on. Hero, who will just barely survive with about 10, 20 HP. But now Brax is up here. Pops at DD. They're going to go after Pepita. Drop him immediately. That's going to be our first blood first going blood. to There's Brax. No it looks like they're going to get another. Until as a uh, demon's going to claim the kill there onto the Zeus. He, uh, he didn't really do all that much damage. It was mainly Brax with that one right click and double damage Dyer's on the TA. But uh, Demon will get the last hit and that uh, will get him the kill. So two kills go the way of Summoner's Rift. And it seemed like that was a pretty late first blood. Um, but we're only six, just under seven minutes into this game. So it's really not that late overall. Dolce Mania trying to... Uh, Trying to get something going here. I think he was anticipating Brax to play a lot more aggressive onto the Queen of Pain in the mid lane and then try to trap him when he goes up onto the high ground. But I think he just needs to go park himself in a lane and just get that level 6. Not sure why he's Dyer's roaming around pre-6. But he will find Bugatti 420 in the jungle here. And, uh, well, they'll just kind of wave at each other and go on, uh, with their, go on their separate ways. But it's really unusual that they've put Nidera down in the bottom lane and that Dolce Mania is walking around. It doesn't really make much sense at all to me because this Dyer's is bottom tower a level is 5 attack. clockwork, not level 6. He doesn't have Hookshot available to him. Without Hookshot, he's not going to be able to get on anyone. Right now, he's just kind of wasting time and falling behind. Dyer's I'm sure there's a reason why they're doing this. I'm just, I'm not sure what it is. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Now he's going to try to farm up a little bit in the jungles, too. Interesting. We are Bugatti 420 with an illusion rune making his way up to the top. He will run into fullback, but Pepita's there as well. And fullback, getting the, feeling the pressure. He'll actually have to throw out the arcane missile to stun up, or magic missile. I keep calling it arcane missile. I'm sorry. It is magic missile. Um, but now Bugatti 420 is in trouble as DDX TPs on up. He will get the taunt off onto DDX and the creep wave, but... He's not going to get as many spin procs as he, he needed there. As DDX dropped down to about Daya's half HP, but they were able to get the kill. Attack. So the first kill for Isaris is on Bugatti 420. But you have to feel that they're going to have to do something to Brax. As he's uh, he's kind of running away with it in the mid lane. And on top of that, Banana Slam Jam has just been completely left alone Daya's in the safe lane. He's already claimed attack. this tier 1 tower and already starting to pressure the tier 2. As he's at 67 and 12 CS <laughs> compared to the safe lane farmer on Isaris, which is the Drow Ranger at 41 and 6. So unfortunately, Pepita not able to keep up. And part of that is just because of the amount of pressure that that duo lane of Axe and Triumph Protector were able to put on uh, that tri lane of Isaris in the top lane. Dolce Mania now sitting in the bottom lane, trying to get 6. Still hasn't gotten 6. I, I, I still, I, I, I just can't comprehend why he was why they were roaming around on the Daya's clockwork what they were trying to accomplish he he just needed to sit bottom for you know maybe another 20 30 seconds Daya's and he would have got six fortified. it's weird really really weird i wish uh wish we were able to to listen to uh, what Isaris is is kind of communicating although i guess it would probably be in a different language uh, it certainly wouldn't be in an english but uh Yeah, it would be interesting to hear what uh, what their thought process on that was, because obviously it didn't pan out, but uh, that def that doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just we don't we don't understand it. <laughs> so you see the value of the support Zeus coming out here as Nidara was not only able to find a psionic trap, but also to find an observe reward. So they got that countered up. Demon just sitting up here in the top lane, getting a little bit of his farm on, as he's elected to go with a set of treads. And uh, he's got one sight. null talisman. He'll probably go after a second. As, uh, he's not going to get bullied out of the lane by any Zeus. He's just going to force him back immediately. Unfortunately, he did like miss a kill the in the mid lane. As that. DDX got a kill onto Brax. Looks like Dolce Mania, as soon as he got six, came there with Roshan the hook shot. And uh, that allowed the them to get the kill there. Uh, Roshan going down. We got Aegis on to the Juggernaut. Demon once again pressuring Nidara. Looks like he's going to be able to get the kill here. Never mind, Nidara with the magic stick was able to stay alive long enough 
for the TP support to come in. And now Demon's going to try to TP away. He should be able to get out of there in time. Indeed, he will. As uh, the damage would have been close, but I don't think they would have been able to kill him in time. We do have level 8 up on Hero. And uh, let's actually see how much gold they've managed to get on these supports. And you can just see the difference. 2100 gold on the Treant Protector, 2800 net worth on Dyer's the Skywrath Mage, compared to 1500 and 20, 1200 for the two supports on Isaris. Huge difference, but there's still that difference at the top as well as the Juggernaut up at 6k, the TA at 5500, Papita only Dyer's managing 4500 on the Dro, 4400 for DDX on the Queen of Pain. So differences all over the place, and that's just going to add up to. You know, a little bit here or there, but it's going to add up to quite a substantial lead. And we can take a look at that right now for the net worth. As we see Summoner's Rift Radiance already over 5,000 gold attack. ahead of Isaris. It's actually getting Base close to 6,000 now. And as XP is going to look similar as well as they're over 4,000 XP ahead. And that's definitely the advantage of running those 2-1-2 lanes. But, uh, you know, we only see it's it's a 2-2 two it's a two -two game. You know, it may actually become 3-2 here in favor of Isaris. His Banana Slam Jamma, oh, almost getting picked off. Indeed he will, but he does have that Aegis, so they will come back up. There is a little bit of support coming in. Bugatti 420 is going to try to run in, but uh, he's going to leave, uh, and probably smartly, leave uh, the Juggernaut to die. But while that was going on, Summoner's Rift managed to get a kill onto Pepita. He died somewhere around up here in the, ra the Dire Jungle. Hero and uh, Demon managed to combine for that kill. Bugatti 420 did find Dolce Mania, who will throw down the cogs, but I think he wanted to push away Bugatti 420, but it pulled him in with him. With fullback there, they will stun up the axe, but as soon as he comes out of that stun, he just chops off the head of the clockwork and then chops off the head of the Vengeful Spirit. So it's a double kill for Bugatti 420. And Summoner's Rift, just like that, pull out ahead to 5-3 for just a split second. Isaris was ahead in kills, but Summoner's Rift quickly changed that right around. Quickly try to cycle through our items here. We're looking for the blink timing on the axe, and this should be it on the courier, which I can't select. There it is, as it just delivers the axe, or the blink to the axe, and we also have a desolator going to the uh, Templar Assassin. So Black Brax has that. Demon did pick up a second Null Talisman. Got another 1,500 gold on hand. We've got uh, Arcane Boots on Hero for the Treant Protector. And that leaves Banana Slam Jammu. Not only has a Mask of Manus, but he's also got the recipe for the Asha to go with his Blade of Lacquer. He just needs the Band of Elven Skin Dyer's to complete that. Tower is under attack. DDX has been struggling quite a bit. He's only sitting around 1,900 gold on hand right now, but hasn't built anything outside of his treads, Null Talisman, and Bottle. Nidara has his Soul Ring as a support Zeus. Full back, just your typical support items and, and boots. And uh, Dolce Mania has picked up an urn to go with Tranquil Boots, but still a little light when it comes to clockwork items. Papita does have a Mask of Madness as well. And uh, he's got phase boots, and he's got a band of Alvin skin, so he's got the opposite of what Banana attack. Slam Jamma has, but both of them looking like they're going for a Yasha as their next item. We do have a smoke coming out from two heroes on Summoner's Rift. It's Hero and Demon that are going to make their way into the jungle, and unfortunately they're going to run into Dolce Mania. And, well, they're going to open with the overgrowth onto the clockwork, and that should be enough time. They're going to be able to lock him down to allow the Mystic Flare to do enough damage. Now they're going to keep pushing, going after Nidara. DDX managed to get a kill once again onto Brax, but uh, he had a little bit of help from Fullback and Pepita all the way up here. But while that was going on, they did lose two heroes in the mid lane, although it was just a clockwork and a support Zeus for a kill on a TA that's snowballing pretty damn hard. But, uh, you know, two for one, it's maybe not the best trade. But at least they're getting trades. At least they're not just losing Radiance people and not getting trades. Under attack. Bugatti 420 heading up here just to defend in the top lane. Looks like Isaris is just completely backed away. We have Demon that's just completed. Or Staff. 
Brax respawning. I'm not sure what they're laughing about. Illusion. I unfortunately missed it. The mysteries renew me. Bugatti 420 has picked up a staff of wizardry. Interesting to see whether he goes for the four staff, which uh, axes usually go for, but uh, uh, Yules is always a, a potential item pickup. Gives him a lot more uh, mana regen, which sometimes axes will struggle with. We do have the nature guised Dyer's axe, but he did just walk past not only an observer ward, but an observer ward with a sentry. So they know he's there and it was pinged out immediately. And they're just completely fortified. evacuating as they're running away. Well, the Ben just running away from these damn jug illusions, but everyone else was just kind of backing away because of that, Dyer's as they were pretty clear that they were, had no chance defending that tier one tower, as it's just fallen. And uh, they didn't really do anything to prevent it. We got a 420, we'll blink in, get a taunt off, and uh, they're going to get that kill without even having to drop the Mystic Flare. That's, of course, still off cooldown. So they just quickly clean up a kill there on the support. Now they're going to make their Radiant's way back up to the top. Is under attack. And they need to be careful Dyer's rotating back up here. Isaris does, at least. As they don't want to walk into the Heroes of Summoner's Rift, especially trying to breach this, uh, this ramp. But even when they don't, they're still going to get picked off. It's Bugatti 420, Banana Slam Jam, and Brax all running right past the tower. They don't care about a tower. It's only 18 minutes into this game, and they don't care at all. They're just going to run right past it, as they've got complete control of this game. Dolce Mania getting a little bit of a battle with Demon. He will hookshot away to Bugatti 420, but that's not the safe way out, as uh, he'll get cleaned up as well. 10 to 4 now. The total four summoners rift as uh, more as LOLs attack. come out in chat. These guys are Dyer's having fun with it. They both realize that this game basically mean, means nothing in terms of the tournament. So they're having a little bit of fun with it. But uh, already summoners rift breaking attack. the base. They Dyer's just dropped the tier three tower. tower. They're going to go after a set of racks. But DDX will jump in, throws out the sonic wave, hits a bunch of targets. But he will go down. Fullback goes down as well. Now. Nidera is going to go down. So just like that, three heroes go down for Isaris. No one falls for the side of Summer's Rift. The closest was Hero who did TP back to Fountain. Radiance but with those racks fallen, they'll just back away. They got what they came for. They'll go back, they'll do a little bit of farming, they'll get the HP and their mana back up, they'll get the cooldowns of their ultimates going again. And uh, they'll look to push probably high ground one more time and just end this game. Brax getting a blink dagger, so he's going to have that so that he can jump in, better position himself in the team fight. And uh, Axe has also picked up a four staff, so he also has the ability to reposition himself in the fight a little bit better as well. Banana Slam Jam, maybe pushed up a little bit too far. It could potentially get swapped here. No, I think fullback is a little bit out of range, although he is going to get slowed up by the Shadow Strike. Dolce Mania will come from the other side with the hook shot, lay down the cogs to push him back towards his teammates. Good cog placement there. And that'll allow them to get the kill. Good coordination there coming up from Isaris. Good solid gank. But uh, they're going to need a lot more of that if they want to come back in the game. Unfortunately, now they just lose their Zeus up in the top lane to Brax as he continues to, to snowball in this TA, although he's only at 3, 2, and 4. But it seems like he's just gigantic in this game. When you take a look at the net worth, he pretty much is. And, uh, well, so is the Juggernaut, and that's that's the problem. Radiant's There's two heroes that are just way attack. in front of anyone on Isaris. And, I mean, you, everyone is basically ahead of their counterpart on the other side. Oh right my. now, we're going to take a look at the gold graph, and it's, it's already oh over 15k. It's getting close to 20k in favor of Sumner's Rift. XP over 10k as well. My dreams. We'll, we'll have Demon going down there as he gets picked off, but Brax will jump on in, gets a kill for himself. Now we will have the Overgrowth go out, and Bugatti 420 will jump on in with the Taunt, but he's going to get trapped in Cogs, and he's going to go down. So will Hero, but now Brax with the Haste Rune is going to go crazy. Never mind, Banana Slam Jam is just going to jump in with the Omni Slash, claim all those kills that Brax was pretty much about to get. Brax does get a kill for himself, though. He gets one onto the Zeus. And who's going to get the kill on the fullback here? It is going to be Brax. So he gets a double in the fight. And the only one left alive is DDX, who has made his way back to the fountain. But that fight actually went a little bit better for Isaris, although they did buy back just on the eventual spirit. But they will call good game while played. So this one's going to be over. 
Summoner's Rift will take it. And uh, that's going to be it for Group A. As Summoner's Rift will finish first in the group. Second will be Leviathan. Third will be Pain Gaming. And fourth will be Isaris. So our top two, Summoner's Rift and Leviathan, will advance to the next round, the playoffs. But uh, that's not coming up next. We've got uh, Group B, which is going to start tomorrow night. So we got three games from that um, tomorrow night. And then the following night, we're going to have the final three games for that group. And then we'll move on to Group C and Group D. And then eventually we'll um, hit the playoffs and uh, we'll get to see Summoner's Rift and Leviathan. Unfortunately, Isaris and uh, Pain Gaming, that's going to be it for them uh, this season of the Dota 2 Canada Cup. So unfortunately, they finished just where they finished last time. Isaris finished fourth in uh, last season, and uh, Pain Gaming finished third in their group last season, so they didn't advance last season either. But they're not falling, they're not going any further down. They're still, uh, they still made their way into the tournament. And uh, well, they've got uh, more to improve on in uh, between now and uh, the next season to hopefully improve on uh, their, well, on their results. As for Group B, we've got uh, we've got Wheel Wreck Wild Whistling. They're definitely going to be the favorites in this group. Um, we've also got Root Gaming, Boreal, and Black Sheep. So that's who's going to round out our Group B. I'm not even sure who's going to be playing on Black Sheep. I feel like they've changed their roster, or they're they pretty much play with a different roster every single time I see them. So it'll be interesting to see who they're actually going to be playing with. Um, but they are. Um, going to be playing two games tomorrow night, but they're not going to be playing in our opener. That's going to be between Wheel and Boreal, and that'll start at 7.30 Eastern tomorrow night. So hopefully you guys will tune in to check that out. And if you don't tune in here, tune in to uh, twitch.tv slash Dota 2 Canada Cup, the official stream, and, and check the game out there. But uh, hopefully you did enjoy my cast, and hopefully you will come back. If you did, hit that follow button below the stream, twitch.tv slash nizcast, if you're listening somewhere else. Maybe if you're listening on uh, one of the VODs, and that's uh, youtube.com slash nizcast, where I upload all the VODs. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at nizcast. But that's going to wrap it up for me tonight. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the cast, and hopefully you'll join us tomorrow for some more Dota 2 Canada Cup action. And... Uh, Make sure you buy the ticket, too. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone.